Hi, hello everyone. We welcome you in Warsaw. We met on the sunny first day, um, early, yeah, like late morning, but still not afternoon. My name is Jakub. I'm Kuba. I'm the local guide, and today I have a special guest, who is Vali, who was not born in, in Warsaw, but who called Warsaw now his hometown. Vali, can you introduce yeah. yourself quickly? So my name is Vali Bode. I'm originally Dutch, as uh, Kuba said, uh, now living officially ten years in uh, in Warsaw, and this is really my hometown. So I hope we can show you some beautiful stuff of this city. So we met today in order to show you a bit of the city uh, and what a place we chose to start our meeting. Yep. We're going to take you on a walk in the old town and the Krakowski Przedmieście part. So some of the most historical and some of the most the nicest parts of our city. And we are starting actually right next to the symbol of our city. Vali, do you, as you, you already live here for a long time. Yeah, but so do you this know the story one, of the... I don't know the story around. So if you can, can sure. help me a bit. Then... You can, the, that's the mermaid of Warsaw, which in Polish we call Serena or Serenka mm -hmm. Warszawska. There are several different stories around Serena. So we don't know which one it's is true. the correct okay. one. But one of them says that once upon a time, there were two sisters, two mermaids that lived in the Baltic Sea. They decided to change the place to, Living. One of them went to Copenhagen, went to Copenhagen exactly. but the other one decided that she don't want to live in the salty water, but should prefer the sweet water. So she sw swam up the Vistula River. Back then in this area, there wasn't any, any city. There was just a village with some poor fishermen living. Mm -hmm. And some fishermen thought, okay, so let's, let's catch, catch the mermaid and let's help sell her as a gift or let's give it as a gift to a local duke. So one night they went to the river they caught the mermaid and they had to keep her somewhere for one night yeah, because it was already quite late. So they asked the small boy to take care of the mermaid, but they didn't tell him one very important detail. Mermaids or the sirens in Greek mythology are the creatures famous for their hypnotizing voice. Okay. So as the boy didn't pluck his ears with anything, when she started to sing, she he got hypnotized and when she asked him to release her, he just took her on the back and he went back to the Vistula River. And then she said, okay, thank you for relieving me, for releasing me. And in the future, you are going to build here a city. And one day I will come back and I will defend the city. And this is why always when we present yes, the mermaid, the, yeah, okay. as you can see, she has a sword the, and the a shield, in, shield. Her, okay. in, in, in her hand. Okay, let's have a look yep. at the market square where we are right now. I wanted to show you especially this site, which is in front of us, because this is one of the nicest one. So we are right now in the heart of what was the old Warsaw. We are going to talk more about the history in, in several minutes. Mm -hmm. But first, let's just have a look at the houses that you can see around us. Yeah. As you can see, so in the past, centuries ago, this was one of the best places to live in the city. So the houses that we can see here were the ones owned by the richest people, the richest parts of the population. You can see some characteristic feature. One of them is the size of houses. Can you see that most of them have three windows per floor? Yeah, correct. But you can also see some houses, for example, on that side that are four windows. Yeah. And as well on this side that are also houses with four windows. Some say that in the past, the, task, the tax that people had to pay was related to the number of windows that people had. Okay. So three would be a regular size, but then if you are from a richer family, you and if you wanted to show off also that you can afford not only to live here, but to build a wider house, then you are building with the four windows like okay. that. And one more thing that you will find only in Warsaw when it comes to Polish cities, you can see that some houses on the, the, on the side, yeah. they would have this extra floor. It looks a bit as if it was like a small house built on the top of the building. Uh -huh. Those are the floors with no floor inside. So Why? it's empty. Yeah, so it's like empty, even though you see there is like there are windows over yeah. there and there is kind of a balcony, but you cannot actually go on the other side. It's not a living space because uh, as these houses are pretty narrow, they were very long. Okay. So there was always a middle part of the building, which was very dark. And the architects thought that, okay, so let's put above this part, let's put this Good extra lighting. floor with the windows just to put the extra light. So okay. we sometimes call them this part the lighthouse and they still are like that. On this side of the market square, you can actually now visit these uh, buildings because right now this is the historical museum of Warsaw. So if you want to learn more about the history of the city, this, this is, is the place good... that you should visit. Okay. No, you, if I just look around here, 
I can just so very well imagine why Warsaw had the name the Paris of the East. Yeah? It it's, has such a nice atmosphere, nice smell. And right now it's still, as you can see even right now, so we are, it's not the weekend, it's during the week, but you can already see some people here. Of course, like if it's not pandemic time, there, there are much more people than there are right now. Yeah. But in general, we always would have the gardens of the restaurants Sounds. here. So if you want to come here to try some Polish food, most welcome to do it yeah. here. And also uh, during the summer season, you can come here to listen to some jazz concerts that are played in the middle of the market square. Yeah. And in the winter time, you can come here either to for ice skating or mm -hmm. to visit a small Christmas market that we have here, which maybe it's more popular in the region that you come from, I guess that in the Netherlands and in Belgium, mm, they have yeah. much more no, Christmas more Germany. market. Germany, but right. still, the, we also have this tradition right now and it's becoming more yeah, and more popular no, and people really like it's to... Nice. It's nice, it, it, it gives something additional to, uh, to a city, so... Um, yeah. Even though the, it looks so nice right now, uh, we will make a quick jump about 70 years ago to, the to see the, to the period of the Second World War, just to see how this has changed uh, over the time. And so we will turn here to the right yeah. and see the picture of how oh, the city the Museum. Yeah. looked like during the Second World War. You said that you are from Rotterdam and yeah. we already talked about it a little bit earlier. And you said that Rotterdam was, was one of the destroyed. cities that was like completely destroyed during the war. I would like you first to look at this map over the, here, like of the, of the photo. This is the photo taken from the air in 1945, which shows the destruction of Warsaw during the Second World War. If you take a closer look at this, Try to find if there is a, any house which would have a roof still standing. No. Not quickly as I can see, I don't see any. Yeah, yeah like you see that there are only like the... The, 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 the fundamental. The outside, yeah, yeah. The, of the, and the outer walls of the buildings. We are right now, we just left the market square, so we are here on this corner, and then we are going this way. Warsaw was destroyed in 85%. But this is, this is actually the site of the market square that we were just mm -hmm. looking a few minutes ago. This is the one where right now we have the historical museum of Warsaw. And this is the best preserved site of the market square after the war. You can still see there is an arch, there is the houses with four windows. So the ones that we just saw um, a few minutes ago. And so basically what we see here, this is the post-war reconstruction. And, and, and is it indeed true what I heard? that Warsaw was rebuilt with the elements of the destroyed buildings? Yes, yeah, it, it's true that the, right after the war has ended, when people started to coming back to the city, because first of all, there was, first of all, there was a discussion right after the Second World War um, among the, um, the, our officials, mm -hmm. whether not to change the capital to a different city, okay. to a city that wasn't destroyed that much during the war. For example, they were thinking about Łódź, which is like an hour drive from Warsaw. Yeah. But one of the things which made them leave Warsaw as a capital was that so many people came back to the city that was physically not standing anymore. So we can say that it was like voting with your feet. They saw so many people coming here and those are actually it started with the people that were coming here. They were coming to the old town of Warsaw and they started to clean this area here. Okay. And this is how this whole reconstruction started. Okay. But yeah, it's what you said. Coming back to your question, a lot of the elements that were used in the reconstruction were the original parts that were found in the ruins. Okay. And okay. even though, as now you know from the pictures and from the story, what we see here is actually quite a new old town. We sometimes joke that this is one of the youngest old town in the world. Yeah, correct, correct. From 1980, we are on the list of World Heritage by UNESCO. And oh, UNESCO okay. actually um, really appreciated the fact that it was the reconstruction on such a high, um, high percentage and that the, this, this was the whole area that was uh, being reconstructed. Okay. Uh, I wanted to stop here for a yeah. second because this is probably one of the places, one of the few places in Warsaw where you can not only see a high-class art, but you can even touch it. 
something that in, if you go ah, to the museum yeah. you cannot it's do no it, right? Like you're not allowed to. But here you can see actually a work of one of the contemporary Polish sculpturer who passed away a few years ago, mm -hmm. Igor Mitora. You can see his works in Rome, in France, in Washington. His sculptures are something like $300,000. One of them was sold a few years ago in New York on South Peace on one of the auctions. So this is something like really precious that we have yeah. here. He designed these doors for this church. This is the Jesuit church. And uh, you can see he had like a very particular style of sculpting yeah. because you can see he never used like full bodies of people. You can see that there are always like parts of it. There are never eyeballs. There are always like a hollow ah, places. Okay. Yeah. And actually what's interesting as well, as the church couldn't afford to buy it, he actually gave it to the church. So he had, they didn't have to pay wow. for it. And being interviewed by one of the journalists, he said that also the fact that those are not like a full bodies of people, it's also related to the war history of the city. Ah, and so okay, also okay, like yeah. it's, it's being reflected in it as well. Okay, let's have a... That was a nice gift. Yeah, right? Who wouldn't like to get one like that? Yeah. And here we are right next to another church. Do you have any idea why do we have two churches, one standing next to another? Uh, the maximum I could think of is two different religions, but it's... This is a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a common answer to this question. Many people say that, yeah, for sure, this was like a, one was Catholic, the other one was the other one. It's actually, it's not true because both are the Catholic churches. The one on the left hand side is the Jesuit church. And this one in front of us that we are standing in front, this is the Cathedral of Warsaw. So originally and historically okay, speaking, this, is... this was the most important church Churching. that we have in Warsaw. This is where our kings would attend the Sunday Mass. This is where some official celebrations would take place. Okay, why would we have two, one standing next to another? The Jesuits were brought here by one of our kings in the 17th century, and the Jesuits wanted to show how important they are. Okay, so they, they had received, their own building. Yeah, they wanted to have their own church, but also it was important for them where they build it. And so they received this area right next to the cathedral. So it's a very prestigious place when, it, when, it, when we speak about the religious terms. And even though they built a sh uh, not as tall building, as the, uh, as as the cathedral, kitty. the tower of this church is higher than the cathedral. So like in the end, they kind of ch showed their importance. I want you to have just one look yeah. at the detail okay, of, here. The, um, uh, of the cathedral doors, because entering to the cathedral, you can see the doors where uh, we see two different symbols. We see the Warsaw Mermaid that we yeah. already saw in the market square. And we can see the, the Polish, Polish national eagle. emblem, so eagle. It's nice with the mermaid because you can see how the mermaid has changed over the centuries. Like for example here, oh, yeah. which looks more like a dragon, like she still yeah. has like the, her, her, her feet, her legs. Her and legs. here he, she's already more in the shape that we know the mermaid right now. Okay. Both the, I don't know if you remember from the picture that we saw on the, like leaving the market square, but this church unfortunately was also destroyed. Uh, during the war, so this is the post for reconstruction. The old town in Warsaw is definitely the place where you should come if you want to try some Polish food. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you are a big fan of Polish food or not. No, it's quite, it resembles quite a lot of to, to Dutch food. Of course, you have your specific like pierogi, uh, the, the, the Jurek, uh, Barsh, Czerwone, which I can definitely all recommend to, to anybody visiting Poland because the food as such is very nice and you can quite well compare it to what we have in Belgium and Netherlands. So it's, uh, it's not like you step into a different world. What's, the, what's your favorite Polish food then? Schabowe. Schabowe. Yeah, 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 so yeah, schabowe yeah. For, for those that don't know. It's a it's kind like of a, a Wiener schnitzel. Yeah, it's, a, yeah it's, a, it's kind of a Wiener schnitzel, although it's not a Wiener schnitzel. No, correct. It's but it's, yeah, it's, it's made with uh, pork meat. Yeah. And yeah, it's, a, it's quite a common, simple Polish dish. But then you also mentioned pierogi. So it's like a pasta dough with different kind of fillings. Yeah. Do you have any favorite filling? I like the one, pierogi? well, I'm not eating them too often, but of course with Christmas they are mandatory as yeah. the second dish. Uh, 
So that basically means that um, the ones with the capusta and the, and the um, mushrooms. And mushrooms, so yeah, with cabbage and the uh, yeah. and, and, and mushroom. Absolute, yeah, that's abs absolutely brilliant. I really like the, one that, the ones that we call the Russian ones. So the one with smashed potatoes and with cottage cheese. Mm -hmm. They're kind of vegetarian also nice, options. Also nice, yeah. And then you also mentioned the soup that is being eaten on the Christmas time, but it's also a soup that you can try any other uh, part of the year. So you mean the barst? No, uh, we the... Uh, we normally have the uh, the mushroom soup. Ah, the mushroom soup, mm -hmm. which which I adore. So that's uh, the barst. I I also like, and but I like specifically jurek. That's jurek. Uh, so the sour rice soup. Correct. It's that uh, it's, it's very common for us to eat it on Easter. Yeah. On the on on High Sunday for the Easter breakfast, but then you can also eat it any other part of the year. But it's, it's yeah, uh, what I like is all these traditions here. But then when you go out to a restaurant, do you go to eat Polish rest Polish food? Or? It depends. It's, uh, we visit sometimes Polish restaurants, but there's such a variety here of restaurants over the years. It's just absolutely amazing. It, uh, it's, uh, you can find Asian, you find... Uh, Thai, Korean, uh, loads of Italian, very good Italian restaurants, uh, Spanish, Indonesian. I've seen, found even one. Um, you can you can find anything. Yeah, that's true. And don't you think that also one more thing about Polish people is that we like to eat Polish food at home, and then when we go out, we like to go to like foreign restaurants. Correct. So this, is correct, what, correct. this is what definitely you can. I think that the gastronomic scene in Warsaw is really like boosting and there is like a lot of different places yeah we'll talk about it more in a few minutes but now we just came we are standing next to the another symbol of our city the which is the royal castle which for us it's not only the place where the king used to live and we had kings till the very late uh, 18th century mm -hmm. but also this is the place where we signed our constitution and this is something that not many people know but we have the second oldest constitution in the world the first one in europe and then also where our parliament had its first meetings. Then in the 20th century, for some period, even our president before the Second World War, he also used to live, live in this castle. Yeah, we will see the castle once again from a different perspective in a second. Uh, but... If I'm correct, even mm -hmm. uh, uh, Poland is, uh, was also the first country that gave women uh, voting rights. Yes, I'm not sure if we're, the, yeah, I think we were definitely like in the avant, in the European yeah. avant-garde and we were one of the first, uh, fir first countries when the, where women were granted the um, voting rights. Which is nice, yeah, it's good. So, yeah, it's, it's really the more I learn about Poland, the more I see how, how unbelievably advanced this country was because sometimes we think that it's, yeah, we, in the West, we didn't know too, too much about this country, yeah? uh, especially after the, after the World War, when it became communist territory, we didn't hear anything. So all this history is just huge eye-openers. Like there's, there's so much to explore. Uh, if, you're, if you're from Netherlands, Belgium or any other country, there's so much to explore in this country. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's nice Warsaw is the, is a fantastic place to start your uh, ex your exploration of uh, exploring of Poland. And one more thing, which I don't know if you would agree with me or not, but I think that Warsaw is also the city where we have this mixture of old and new. Yeah. And here we have one example of it because ah, if you look on the other yeah. side, it's already on the other side of the Vistula yeah. River that the, that the city is located at. That's the national stadium. In a few years ago, we co-organized together with Ukraine. European football championship. However, the stadium that you can see over there was not was built with an idea that it shouldn't be only for football because we know how it is with this. Like, you organize something and then there is nothing happening. Correct. So this was actually made as a multifunctional arena. So already there was volleyball, there was Red Bull motocross. Yeah. One year there was even windsurfing competition. So they built a swimming pool, an artificial swimming pool. They built the fence to produce the wind. And you can actually went there to, um, to, to for for the windsurf. Ah, okay. Apart from it, there are also congresses and concerts. So already, celebrities like Beyonce, Ed Sheeran, 
they or called play they already performed at the stadium so this is the stadium that is really used yeah, during for, the, for, 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 the, for the for different regions but also if there is so it's not related so it's not linked to any football team that we have in Warsaw no, I know. It's but a, if we have our national if our national selection team, plays a, then they play um, here. a match then they would play here speaking about football are you a supporter of any of we have two local teams in Warsaw are you a supporter of any of them? Unfortunately not. I am bound by heart to my club in Rotterdam, but I will not. Let's not uh, talk football because if this is broadcast in the Netherlands, there are many different supporters of different clubs. But my club comes from Rotterdam. It's uh, that's uh, that's where my heart is and where a lot of Polish players played. So uh, that was always. That's where I always, for whatever reason, felt a connection for myself. I, I don't know why, but I always wanted the Polish players to be successful. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why, it was just something in my gut. A, a good will. That they should, yeah. <laughs> but do you know the names of the two football teams that we have here? Yeah, um, one of them is... Polonia. Yeah. And the second one is... Um, uh, uh, Legia. Legia Warszawa. <laughs> I'm mentioning that because uh, we are standing right now, right in front of the column, which is another symbol of our city. Yeah. If you look up at the column, you can see actually one of our kings, yeah. the King Zygmunt III. Uh -huh. He was not Polish, he was from Sweden, which okay. already for many people may look strange. But the, thing, the, the interesting thing about our history is that for two centuries our kings were not like an inherited monarchy but those were the kings that we were voting for it's so very well, weird because it was very, very modern for that yeah I, th nice that you mentioned that unfortunately you cannot call it full democracy because uh, only people that had the right to vote for them were the noblemen yeah, okay. so the noblemen which was around like 10 percent of our population they had the right to choose the new the next king the kings could be from all over europe so for example like this one he was from sweden yeah. but we also had one that was from france from hungary from poland obviously and from current territory of germany is, it, is uh, this the one that changed uh, capital from krakow to warsaw correct Okay. So that's the one that in the late 16th century, in the beginning of the 17th century, decided to move the capital from Krakow to Warsaw. And do you have any ideas why he did it? What I heard, because the travel. Yeah, that's a, that's a good hint. There are actually like different explanations given. And I think that there is, in each of them, there is a bit of, of truth. So first of all, he was a very interesting personality. Uh -huh. I was mentioning the football teams because he is actually the first Polish monarch that played football. He actually, he was interested in football, so he played football. Okay. Maybe that's why when, the, when this team that we mentioned, Legia Warszawa, if they win the championship, the Polish championship, you can come here and you can see the king wearing uh, the, the, yeah, like the team, the team, the show uh, of, the, 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 the team. The, the, of the team. Yeah, so that's only if they become the championship, the okay. champions of Poland. So, he was also very interested in alchemistry. He was looking for a philosophical stone and during one of his researches in Krakow, he accidentally set fire to the castle. So parts of the castle were destroyed. And then people were encouraging him that maybe he can move somewhere else so he could continue his researches somewhere where there is nothing you know, to be destroyed. So that's one story, that just because of these reasons, like he was looking for a new place yeah. to live. Then the second one is definitely, as he was from Sweden and he had the right to be, uh, he thought he had the right to the Swedish throne as well, he wanted to be closer to his homeland. Yeah. But then the third one is that back then, not only we were choosing our king, but it was not only Polish nobility that they did, but also Lithuania. Poland and Lithuania were one kingdom, so it was one country and they needed a place that would be more centrally located okay. in the city, so like in the country. So that's why they chose that Warsaw was just more conveniently located within the country than Krakow. So it was closer for okay. all of them so, to come here. Yeah, there's always many stories that, that go around. So there's never one, one story, which is nice because no. it, it gives different insights. No, not, not one uh, explanation. Correct, correct, right. correct, correct. The, the, the castle, unfortunately, was also destroyed. So this is the post war reconstruction. Yeah. But still, because many people say, okay, so if it was destroyed, is it the point of, is there any point of visiting it? 
I think yes, because even though the construction of the castle is brand new because it was reconstructed, but there is a lot of original items inside because the workers that were working in the castle in the beginning of the Second World War uh, expecting a bit what's going, what can happen to the castle, so the they started to hide pieces ah, of okay. original elements like the furniture and also some pieces of the, 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 the decoration. Uh, they hid it and then this was reused in the post-war reconstruction. So even though it's like a new structure, but then when you but go inside, with the old a lot of old elements. And here we also have both like a Belgian and a Dutch hint. Because first of all, you can see very nice 16th century tapestries from Brussels. Yeah. But for the Dutch Patriot, you can also see here two original paintings by Rembrandt. That are not even from his workshop, but we know that they are the original. That there was this Rembrandt research project okay, that yeah. was checking uh, around the world whether this painting was actually painted by, the, by Rembrandt or was it only something from his workshop and this one is the work of these ones are the work from Rembrandt. Okay. So now you can visit it. It's a museum. It's sometimes also the, the castle is used as the um, for some official events, but yeah. mm -hmm. normally you can visit it also as a museum. And we are slowly leaving the old town of Warsaw. Let us just cross on the other side of the street. We are entering the street, which is called Krakowski Przedmieście, yeah. where you can already see different architecture from what we saw over there. But just before we leave the old town, I just want to show you one more thing, which is the model of our city. Ah, uh, this? Yeah. So here you can see well, and here you can understand well the basics about the history of our city. First of all, Warsaw is not that old city in comparison to many European cities because Warsaw is a bit more than 700 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when it was founded, it wasn't here the capital. The capital was in, yeah, Krakow. Yeah, it was in Krakow. Only afterwards, thanks to that king over there, it was moved to Warsaw. Now, the location. Here you can see the Vistula River. Yeah. So you can see that the city was located on the hill, which was fair first like helping the defense of the city, yeah, correct, but true. also could be used for the transportation and goods. Here you can see the old town that we walk. We, we met here today. We started at yeah. this very point, which is the mermaid of uh, the, the symbol of the city. So this is the market square. We walked this way. Here we have the Jesuit church. Yeah. And you can see actually even here in the model, yeah, that correct, the tower is higher than any other point in the old town. We have the cathedral and then the royal castle here. This whole space is quite small, so this is the, it was all surrounded with the walls. And now we entered this part, which is called the street Krakowski Przedmieście, where you already can see more movement because the, the old town is only the pedestrian zone. And here there are also the, a bit of traffic is allowed. Well, we are already, we left the old town of Warsaw. Right now we are walking Krakowski Przedmieście street. So the street that leads toward Krakow. Yep. And this is the street where already different way that it looks like, different kind of architecture, where we will find a lot of former palaces of noble families that had their residences here. Uh -huh. Right now, mostly public buildings, public institutions. Um, yeah, we were just talking, the, interrupting us about the restaurants well, in sorry. Warsaw and about the culinary scene. You were mentioning that, also we were talking about it a bit earlier, that we do have a lot of very quality products yeah. when it comes to food, and this is something that more and more Polish people are looking for. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, what, I, what I really appreciate here is, is uh, the drive from a lot of people to buy ecological uh, or vegan mm -hmm. to move to uh, uh, some more on, uh, on the vegan side. It's, it's, I'm really impressed. It's, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned vegan and there's actually like a couple of years ago we were named one of the top vegan destinations in the world. Not oh, even really? in Europe, okay. there were only okay. three other European cities that got it as well. We are one of them, so there is like a vegan vegetarian scene is really growing very fast. Not that I'm a vegetarian by nature, but it's but nice it's if people it's, think about it's it. It's interesting because some of them, they actually they uh, reinvent the Polish typical cuisine into vegetarian okay. and vegan version. So you can go to a restaurant which would serve you vegan uh, schabowe that you like. No problem. Okay. I, I, I wanted to stop here for a second yeah. because here you can see a reproduction of a painting of an Italian painter, Bernardo Bellotto, 
who is better known by his nickname Canaletto, in the 18th century. He was actually on his way from Dresden to St. Petersburg because he wanted to paint for Russian Tsarin. Okay. This is the time when our last king ruled. And he stopped in Warsaw, he wanted to receive some letters that would, like, would say that he is a good painter. And our king, Stanislav August Poniatowski, liked him so much that he said, no, so please stay here and you will paint for me. And he ordered from Canaletto the whole series of paintings depicting the way that Warsaw looked like back then. So for us now, this is the perfect document of what the city looked like in the 18th century. Canaletto was extremely detailed. He was probably one of the yeah, first painters that, yeah. here that used camera obscura. So he used it to make the first drawing and then he was moving to his workshop. So if you look at the buildings that are presented here, and right now these reproductions are placed in the places so that you can compare how it looked like in the past and how it looks right now, you can see all the details of the buildings. Uh, it's uh, amazing, really, because even the color coding on the walls with the dirt is, uh, are, uh, are represented almost. And not only this, but also if you look at the way that, for example, yeah. people are dressed or that cars that they are using, then it's all also depicted as it was in the 19th nice. in the 18th century. This so one, some of this... This one I had not seen yet, so thanks. The, the, if you want to see the original ones, they are also in the Royal in, Castle. Ah, okay, so there is a special okay. room which presents the paintings of Canaletto. And also, as they are so detailed, they were very helpful during the reconstruction of the city. So after the Second World War, some of these paintings were also used in order to, you know, to rebuild some of the, the buildings that are uh, now we can see uh, in the city. Yeah, I, uh, just, just to make mm -hmm. a short link to an Italian name, I don't know whether it was still uh, before we were interrupted, uh, whether people got it, but uh, if you like good coffee, definitely Warsaw slash Poland is absolutely serving you whatever you want. It's, uh, uh, so many baristas and good quality coffee, sh coffee bars, it's really absolutely top class. Yeah, so you mentioned, you mentioned the coffee, which is interesting, because apart from the many chains that we have, we also have a lot of the small local ca local cafes. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the restaurants, like the big variety of the restaurants, not only with the Polish food, but also with international. So basically anything you want to eat, it's quite easy to find it in Warsaw and there's gastronomic scene is really growing and it's crazy and many people don't expect it. I think when they come here, they, it's a bit of a surprise for them. And, um, but also I would like to mention one more thing, which I like. So these are the sweet things. Yeah, like the, definitely the, the cafes, cake. Yeah. Not only for coffee drinking, but also for different cakes. Do you have, do you have any favorite in Poland? Uh, I like, like any sweet uh, thing? Na uh, Napoleonka. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, well, this, they're quite different from Netherlands. Uh, and what I specifically like is that after dinner, there's always sweets on the table. Yeah. And dinner, of course, here is more in the afternoon than in the evening. Mm -hmm. So it's around between two and four. Um, and then there's always something sweet afterwards. It's, uh, it's, uh, and always nice. Yeah, the, the most typical ones would be sernik, yeah. the cheesecake. We would have also charlotka, which is kind of a variation. Some people would call it the apple, apple pie, but yeah. it's, like, it's, it's, a, it's bit a bit different. different than an apple pie. We also were talking a bit earlier about pączki, the Polish yeah. donuts, which are much different from what you see in other, like for example in the US, because our donuts never have a hole. They are always filled Full. with something yeah. inside. So the very typical filling for uh, Warsaw that you can find in many places here would be the marmalade made yeah, out of rose correct. petals mm -hmm. and from plum. Very nice. The, uh, so those are it's the... A, it's an energy bomb for yeah, the day, but, uh, but, but, but they are nice. It's, uh, um, by the way, I see, I think what, what, what is very important for me as coming from another country uh, and, and at first being here as a tourist, I see so many buses driving here. I think what definitely very important for people to know is that public transport to and from the airport, uh, in, uh, including taxis, 
is just absolutely fantastically organized yeah, here. Right. You can go by train, you can mm -hmm. go by bus. Ah, to znowu miejsce. Uwaga, trzy. Yeah. So what is what is uh, I think key for tourists to, un, uh, to to know is that the possibilities to get to and from the airport here in Warsaw, a it's very close because it's almost in the in the city center. Yeah. Uh, B there's a train, there's taxi, there's buses. Uh, it's all very much very affordable. So you cannot compare taxi prices in Warsaw with whatever we are used to in in Netherlands or mm -hmm. uh, or Belgium. So mm -hmm. let that never be a hindrance uh, to get over here because those costs will be considerably lower than what you have in uh, um, and yeah even now with the new metro lines. So there's much more uh, you can approach with, with there's so many tram lines so many bus lines etc etc so yeah and it's also nice that you use one ticket that like the one ticket can be used for all different means of transportation correct, correct. but if we have people that are more interested in like in more physical activities it's also possible because we have now this a network of city bikes yeah. that you can also run there are more than 400 stations all around the city and even if you come here from abroad, it's very easy. It takes you like one minute to register. Then you have to um, upload some money on your account the, within the system. And then you can use them also for sightseeing in the yeah, city. And uh, I think what is important, because it may scare off some people, um, everything is explained also in English on those, mm -hmm. uh, on those polls. So you can, you can even e easily find all the information in English. Um, level of English in general in Poland is is very good at the moment. Mm -hmm. So people being afraid of that they will not be able to manage with the language, it's not an issue at so all. Do you, do you find it easy to get along being here speaking English? Yeah, but I'm okay. I'm trying to speak Polish as much as, as possible. Well. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I've already heard your Polish, so I know it's very good as well. Thanks. But. <laughs> We, uh, we just came and we are uh, to the building, which is the palace of our president. Yeah. That's where our president lives. This is one of the noble houses that were built here over the centuries. So once it was owned by a noble family, right now it's a public building. So it's the residence of our president. But there is also one more interesting thing related to this palace, which is one of the most famous Paul, a Polish guy, a Polish gentleman that many people uh, mistakenly called that he was French. I mean, the very famous composer, Frédéric Chopin. Ah, yeah, correct. So Frédéric Chopin, that was actually born not far away from Warsaw. He spent half of his life here in yep. Warsaw. And actually, he always lived along Krakowskie Przedmieście Street. Okay. And it was only in the second half of his life that he moved to Paris to continue his career. Uh, even though he's buried in Paris, we have, as we say, the most important part of him because you can find his heart in Warsaw, in one of the churches. But this palace that we just passed, the presidential palace right now, this is the place where Frédéric Chopin played his first public concert. Ah, Do you have any okay. guess how old he was when he did it? I guess, if you ask me that, so I guess he was a, but that's a guess, a similar type of person like gifted person like Mozart or so I think six seven close so he was not that genius apparently okay. because he was eight okay <laughs> but yeah he played here uh, during one of the charity events uh -huh. and what is funny that many people said that he was wearing like a white collar and afterwards like there was like a huge applause this was one of the first concerts that he gave to a bigger audience and then he thought that, he, that everyone was applauding because he was looking so nice and that he had this white collar. <laughs> he so he said to his mother, like, oh, it's like everyone liked my Color. white collar that I was wearing, like not <laughs> appreciating that. No, it's actually, you're a very talented person, like a, a young, young boy that played. Okay, um, right next to the presidential palace, we have one of the most iconic hotels Hotel. yeah. in Warsaw. That's the Bristol Hotel which is more than almost 120 um, years old. Uh, this is the hotel where actually everyone famous that ever visited Warsaw most probably would stay in a Bristol even a hotel. Dutch one, so. Oh yeah, so if we even have so, some... So it must be affordable, otherwise a Dutchman would not go. It's, uh... <laughs> 
we, you, the celebrity list that visited this hotel starts from Pablo Picasso, go through Marilena Dietrich, who actually was supposed to stay in the hotel on the other side, uh -huh. but she had too many clothes with her and she couldn't fit it in the room, so she moved to this hotel, to um, Bill Gates, Woody Allen, um, Bruce Willis. Uh -huh. uh, would you like to have a coffee? Yeah, but I think what we should tell the people as well is that, of course, this is the most, one of the most expensive hotels. But in Warsaw, as such, there are so many different possibilities to stay overnight yes. in, in, in any price range uh, yeah. and good quality hotels. So don't think that this is the standard. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Although I wanted to invite you here because yeah. this is one of the nicest cafes and it's like a bit of an old fashioned cafe in the okay. Bristol Hotel. I'm so right after you. Ahead. But after ah, you. Thanks. But yeah, but as you said, and I think it's also what you said that there is like a, quite a big variety of hotels that are in Warsaw. And also what is interesting, and I think it's nice to know for the people that would like to go to, the, to Warsaw for a weekend, is that as Warsaw is still a business city, if you come here over the weekend, weekend you can the prices are much, much more attractive. Price. Just one, one thing which is very cool in this hotel, this is the wall of the celebrity guys that visited the hotel. Okay. It's made, as you can see, those are the door knobs, uh -huh. right, to, the, to, the, to the doors. It's uh, all made uh, in, in this very nice graphic way, in a way. It starts here in the middle. You can see the one with a symbol yeah. of Hotel Bristol. This is Ignacy Paderewski. He was uh, the first uh, one of the owner of the hotel, but he was also the pianist. And then around him, you can see all the other people that visited. And you can see like all different variations of people. You can see our former president and Nobel yeah, Prize winner, yeah. Alec Valenza. You can see American president, Bill Clinton. Yeah. And then it goes all the way. Yeah, sometimes yeah. like some people seem quite unexpected uh, when you see like different kind of people here, but it's like the whole variety. And then, as you can see, there are still some uh, empty ones. So those are for the new ones to come. Okay. One of the latest guests of this hotel, who had quite a particular um, wish, was the pop singer uh, Rihanna, uh -huh. who really liked the smell in this hotel. Because this is actually the only hotel in Warsaw that has a particular smell. They had like a special perfumes made for them. And she liked it so much that they are used only here like inside the hotel, uh -huh. so you cannot buy them. But she liked it so much that the director of the hotel called the perfume makers and to, to make some bottles for Rihanna. And so, let's have a coffee, yeah. but just on our way entering, have oh, a look on the left side. As on the left side, you can see another famous Paul, uh -huh. another person that was born in Warsaw. This is Maria Skłodowska, who is better known abroad as Marie Curie. Mm -hmm. But we know her as Maria Skłodowska. She was born in Warsaw. Uh, so the double prize Nobel winner, yeah, like the one in chemistry and one in physics. And she is here because in 1913, when she came here, after she got her ne second Nobel prize, she was invited. There was a banquet made in this hotel. And so, uh, so this for, sorry, ah, so this okay. for us. And she was invited here uh, for the banquet. Okay. Uh, is it this one for us? Okay. So let's have a seat here. It's quite interesting though that when they made this party for her and they were giving speeches about how good she, like how great person she is and like a great researcher, she was, and that's what her sister wrote down, she was making notes all the time. And then after the whole meeting, the sister asked, okay, so what were you doing? Like, were you like writing down what these people were saying? So like, no, 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 I was just having some math exercise to solve. So she was still like focused on the math things because she was a very, she, she was a very shy person. She mm -hmm. didn't like any public speeches. But then if she gave a public speech, she often, she always actually started it saying, I come from Poland, from Warsaw. So she was very patriotic, even though she moved to afterwards, so she didn't live in Warsaw, but in Paris, but she still remembered her hometown. Here, we talk a bit about uh, sweet things before. Yeah. Uh, here you have a chance to try something which is also typical for Warsaw. This is the cake which is called wuzetka. So it's like okay. a sponge cake. Yeah. There is a layer 
of jam. Yeah. Then we have the whipped cream and then again the spo spawn cage. The spawn cage should be either with chocolate or with cocoa flavor. The name, so WZ, usually WZ in yeah. English, it comes from the name of the street that was built right after the Second World War underneath the old town. So this is when this cake also appeared, so it kind of like... Okay, so the, well, this is the first the time for the, me. Yeah, the, oh, the, for, for you to try with that cake. I haven't tried it before. No, it's the first time, so I'm gonna let myself be surprised. Okay, so now we are going to have, a, a, have something sweet and have a coffee. Um, I hope that yeah. our viewers would be... Yeah, I hope that we encourage you to come and to visit Warsaw, and I hope that next time we meet here in Warsaw, so I see you in Warsaw. And I can tell you, it's really worthwhile. I can highly recommend it. It's nicely done, yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. Now let's I'm not try. sure, yeah, like which one to choose with the... Now let's is it with the fork? Yeah, with the fork. Let's try. Let's try.